Ladies and gentlemen, starting the next session about EPCs, Developers and System Integration Technology. I'd like to invite Mr. Sarayesh Vajdil, CEO of Scorpus Trackers, Mr. Sachin Agrawal, AGM Renewable Energy Godrej and Boys, Mr. J.K. Shankar, CMD Eastern Power, Mr. K.G. Vijayavarvi, Business Head EPC Oriano Solar, Mr. Satish Pandey, Head Performance Analysis and PV Testing, Mahindra System. We have Mr. Amit Barve, VP Anapak Energy, and Mr. Aditya Singh, Deputy Manager of Thermax. May I also invite Mr. Satish Pandey, Head Performance Analysis and PV Testing, Mahindra System, and Mr. Giridhara Gopalan from MV Solar. And uh, I am sure it's a great pleasure for us to have Mr. Sachin Agrawal as chairing and moderating this session. Thank you, the entire EQ team and Anand especially for organizing such a beautiful award function. And it was more of a warm-up session for everyone after the lunch. So right now I am seeing everyone is charged up with all the awards in their hand. Uh, now to move forward since we are late, so what I will do is, uh, we will have a quick round of uh, introduction uh, by the panelists here. Uh, with a short introduction about their company and about the experience what they have seen uh, in their uh, uh, area of expertise. <coughs> uh, but as a panelist, we would like to have the more questions Q&A from the audience because although we are sitting on the app, but we know a quite a lot of experiences sitting there in the audience and uh, which are uh, having a huge experience carrying with them. So. I will start on my on my right side. So, sir, you can start with your introduction about yourself and uh, what is the experience and your field of expertise. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this second session, and we should thank Anand and his team for the wonderful arrangements that they have made. Uh, a small introduction about myself. My company, we try to bring in foreign. Investors for in uh, big companies to India. They could be utilities. They could be pension funds. The first, the first company we did was uh, Sun Edison. And you, I'll be able to share a small secret with you. Uh, the the MOU that we signed with them, Sun Edison was prepared to pay 40 lakhs per megawatt for bringing them business. So where we are today, to where where it was those days, today the prices may not be at one tenth that. From from Saint Edison, we had Infinity with us, Infinity Solar from Belgium. We also had uh, SkyPower Global from Canada. That's also one of our clients. Um, SkyPower today has about 175 megawatt operational in Telangana and uh, 50 megawatt operational in in Madhya Pradesh. We also have 1000 megawatt MOU in Chhattisgarh government. We are trying to make that happen. Well, coming to uh, what can be done, we have a target of 100 gigawatt, the country has. I have been speaking to the former MNI secretary, Upendra Tripathi, and he very much liked it. I told him, why not we install 1 megawatt of solar power in 100 and 1 lakh villages in the country. There are 6 lakh villages in the country. We shortlist 1,000, 1 lakh of them and just install 1 megawatt. Land will not be an issue because land is, there is no issue for land in the villages. Good connectivity could be an issue. That's one thing that has to be addressed. But uh, meeting a target of 100 gigawatt could easily be achieved. Going forward, I would uh, like to say that anybody who is interested in foreign, now today to get foreign investors into the bandwagon is very different. SoftBank, when it comes to India, they want to tap with the biggest people. They will not want small people like me. But if they would like to remain a 100% company in India, not share the resources with other Indian companies, my, coming to me is the option to them. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I myself, uh, KG Vijay Vargaya. I'm uh, working as a business head with Oriano Solar. Uh, Oriano Solar started in 2015. And today, we are uh, executing and under uh, already installed and under execution 350 plus uh, megawatt solar projects, rooftop as well as ground mount. We are having around 135 megawatt under uh, execution at the moment. And uh, it was the first fastest growing uh, technology company in India in the Deloitte uh, 
technology is 2018. We are primarily uh, working for utility scale projects with the developers as well as with the captive consumers. And we do both uh, ground mount as well as rooftop projects. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, myself Satish Pandey. I am uh, heading the plant performance and PV testing. Uh, I am associated uh, last six years in the Mahindra system. Um, before that I was in Moserwell and I have 12 years of experience in the PV industry. And uh, we are the like first in terms of the field uh, testing, like a uh, module uh, performance test and plant performance test. We, uh, la we have started last year uh, technical due diligence of the plant which are undergone like transaction phase from uh, seller want to sell the plant and we have completed around 2 gigawatt of portfolio in terms of the plant, uh, asset uh, transaction phase. Yeah, I am uh, Mr. Giridhar Gopalan. So I am part of the MV group and MV is one of the very old uh, company in solar. Like we have started uh, way back in 1992. So we were the pioneers in solar uh, water heater at that point of time and later we were one of the first uh, module manufacturers in India and uh, we have two divisions uh, one is the module manufacturing division and the other one is the systems division so I am heading the systems division so we have a 500 megawatt uh, module manufacturing plant at Bangalore and uh, on the system side we are into all the areas like uh, we have been a developer we have been an EPC player a rooftop uh, <coughs> system integrator and we are into OINM. So uh, we have uh, almost uh, all the PV areas, we are uh, AM, we have presence in everything. So this is uh, the brief about the company and I had the uh, EPC developer and OINM and the rooftop segment of MV Solar. Thank you. Adam, so about you, your company and then since your last in the manner, so I would like you to more like on the use of the tracker tools and IoT uh, if you want to develop deep into it. So you can have continue on the solution. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Shailesh Vaidya. I am from a company called Scorpius Trackers, which is based in Pune. <laughs> Uh, we started this company four or five years ago and uh, since then have concentrated only on uh, solar trackers. Uh, we now have nearly four to five hundred megawatts installed and under construction in India. And last six months have started moving out of India and have qualified with large developers globally like NG, NL and others and have bid for nearly 14 gigawatts of uh, projects. Uh, Scorpius is a technology company. so we. Do not do EPC or don't make the steel. We have a very strong vendor base. So it's a very good business model in which uh, there's a big supply chain which we control and uh, we focus only on the technology product. It's a pure make in India example. And with this concept of concentrating only on new products and research, this year later on we'll be launching our own robotic model cleaning solution and also a string level uh, wireless combiner box uh, solution with lot of data analytics and IoT solutions all developed in the company. <coughs> now going to Sachin's uh, uh, requirement of me talking on IoT, I can only say that all our tracker solutions are currently based on a very strong uh, IoT and cloud platform which allows us to monitor the performance of all trackers installed. We have a few plants installed in Japan, in Africa, in Palestine and in sitting in Pune we are monitoring the performance of those plants based using the IoT solution which you have developed. On drones, uh, traditionally if it's a ground mounted system, we tend to use a lot of uh, total stations and surveying equipment. But the last 200 megawatts we have done in India has been using uh, drones for uh, doing land surveys. Now drones are much more faster, they are extremely accurate as compared to a total station, cheaper of course. And uh, what they do is allow us to get a 3D plot of the land which we have developed a tool in Scorpius which allows us to calculate the cubic meter of soil to be removed. So a developer does not have, a EPC does not have to go to a land and just flatten the whole land. He gets a good map of 
which area has to be excavated by what amount of cubic meters of soil. So these kind of techniques are used <coughs> using drones before the installation. After installation, obviously, we all know what drones do in O and M and in thermography, etc. So again, Scorpius is a technology company, and uh, the tools, data analytics, IoT, drones are used very extensively by us, either directly or indirectly, for uh, helping out the EPC to make the tracking installation very easy. Yeah. Yeah, one one follow-up question. Now looking at how the panel prices are dropping, so how do you see the future of the solar tracker in India at least? So very frankly, uh, beginning of 2018 we realized that the panel prices are down, the bidding is even more down. So I don't see a market for trackers in India, very frankly. In the utility scale where people bid 2 rupees 40 paise or something, one reason being that trackers generally make sense because trackers give you 15 to 20 percent more energy. But they make sense only if the delta between trackers and fixed yield is less than 10 percent of the capex. Now people who do fixed yield designs have no clue about uh, good structure design. So they end up, end up doing designs which are less than 22 tons or 15 tons or whatever. So those designs will never last but that will be known only after a big storm. But till then trackers will not be used in India much for utility scale. In the last one year we have done a lot of captive plants where the owner of the establishment is very interested in a very good design and he wants it to last for 25 years. In that case, uh, trackers will definitely be used. One reason being that trackers give you a nice flat uniform generation through the day. Uh, instead of having a peak power in the afternoon, which like in the earlier panel we saw, utilities will just stop taking power in the afternoon because most of the fixed yield plants give a boost in the afternoon only. Trackers flatten that out and give you a good power through the day. That's but that is the reason why we started our shift outside India, where nearly 90% of the plants are with trackers. Uh, now, coming to Mr. Gopala, who, who is uh, wearing the various caps from the developer from the EPC. So, just wanted to understand on the contracting, legal, commercial, and the taxation side. That is, you want to cover the legal framework with you. What is your experience in India so far, and uh, what are the challenges you have faced? And, uh, probably what is the, how you are able to overcome those challenges. Yeah. Uh, coming to the legal front, uh, legal and the, uh, what do you call, the statutory things. Like when you take up a mega power project. So, uh, what we find is many times the law which is applicable for the land is not known to anybody. Rather, even the uh, buyer of the thing like this come themselves are not, sometimes they are not aware of what is to be done. So it just like uh, we spend a lot of time on uh, trying to understand what are the various formalities to be done, which papers have to be done. So what is the thing? So there is a big uh, team which is chasing this uh, non-value added activity in India. So what I thought is uh, if there is some improvement, it will really help uh, the developer and the EPC community. And uh, many times uh, certain surprises come up in the last minute. And uh, the deadlines are also very, very stiff. Like you just <coughs> miss one day, then your penalty is to the tune of uh, the PPA gets reduced by 30 to 40 percent, which is totally unrealistic. So these are the kind of uh, scenarios where we work with and then try to do our projects. So that's, uh, I think there's some improvement should come up in the coming years. Um, what are the challenges you have faced in the land land acquisition for the scale of that you have done? Land uh, is that is another big uh, area like uh, the government, uh, the laws of the land. So there is a lot of uh, like they try to say that you have to get this uh, clearance, that uh, X, Y, Z. There is so many clearances there, and whatever you do, you finally you see that uh, you feel that you have not done it. And there is still something pending. So it's like even the project is over one, two years down the line. Also, we work on getting some panchayat approval, not panchayat really, but something else, conversion. So this is a very big uh, challenge for uh, developers trying to get the land. But in spite of that, we have acquired uh, several hundred acres of land and then did, did projects successfully. But it's not a very healthy atmosphere. They are dealing with land the statutory uh, requirements and all that and you are always under pressure and uh, gets harassed by sometimes officials and all that. Uh, 
Mr. Satish, since uh, you are from a Mahindra analytics team uh, and uh, you are there in the industry since uh, you are quite old in this industry. Uh, so, you had seen the plant performance uh, you will be seeing in your operation and maintenance and you will be using a lot of analytics. So, what is your experience with the module manufacturers or the kind of panel that has been used probably three to four years uh, back? Uh, and similarly, what is your experience with the inverters? Even you can just throw light on the uh, on the various aspects of the supply chain, which goes into the establishment of the solar power plant. So, uh, in terms of the uh, performance uh, in plant, so module has played like. Uh, 90% times the role. So, in older plant like commission before 2014, uh, like 90% plant are uh, like behaving as per the like warranty terms only. Uh, and uh, in 10, 10 to 20% are plant which are like uh, underperforming by 10 to 12%. Uh, in not whole plant, but in some of the like. Uh, if you say uh, like older plants are uh, maximum 10 to 20 megawatt size. So in, term, in terms of the percentage, around 80% of the modules were uh, performs below the warranty terms. And uh, when we talk about like warranty terms, so what happened in terms of the measurement uncertainty, most of the time everyone like uh, uh, claim that the module tested from the factory should be tested at the same location with same measurement uncertainty. So what happens if your module is underperformed by 3 to 4 percent, so you have to claim only when it crosses the uncertainty, measurement uncertainty. That is like if the module uh, in first year 2.5 percent degradation allowed and if the module is uh, underperforming by 5 percent, then only you are supposed to uh, like uh, claim the warranty because two percent or three percent they have considered as a measurement tolerance. So these kind of like uh, challenges uh, of the plant performance and you cannot uh, like directly correlate with the module uh, or like system. So in most of the time, uh, installation practices are uh, like uh, play a major role because the module are like. Power, in terms of the measurement of the power, it not only related to the uh, P max or like whatever you call like a performance of the module, they are like if, if any of the module have gone through like a cell crack, then the modules are not covered under the warranty because of this. This may happen due to the like installation practices. So, yeah, at the early stage of the like in 2013-14, the modules. Uh, like we are installed with not uh, skilled manpower, so most of the time uh, manpower install the module by stepping on the module and that leads the micro crack and all and that uh, in uh, over a period of time of after four, four to five years, those micro cracks will lead the accelerated degradation of the module and which are not covered under the warranty and like similarly for the uh, in terms of the VOS the connector will play a major role while uh, like uh, uh, in terms of the maintenance and all since uh, if your modules are performing good but if the connectors are not uh, of uh, like compatible uh, category then they will lead to higher dc losses and which uh, uh, impact the plant performance as well and in terms of like key uh, points like uh, soiling which play a major role for the plant performance evaluation and uh, second one is the, like uh, in terms of the uh, cleaning cycle which also play a major role while evaluation of the plant, uh, plant performance and uh, in terms of uh, most of the like uh, energy simulation software we use that time they were not so like uh, mature enough to predict the energy which we are uh, generating with the solar plant. So the energy like uh, weather source data which we are used to predict the software which needed uh, like quite uh, accurate. But as of now in uh, for the India region 
the weather data are not uh, enough uh, in terms of the accuracy level. Like if we talk about the uh, solar GHI prediction for the euro, the measurement uncertainty is uh, less than three percent. But for uh, India, across, like uh, for this um, Rajasthan Gujarat region, the accuracy is around five percent. Whereas in the south part of the region, where the cloudy days are higher, then where the at that location the uncertainty is more than seven to eight percent. So you can assume that the energy predicted by the simulation is not accurate as we we have put it in your financial model. So that sometimes like uh, aggressive prediction may lead your uh, uh, skew your financial model. So accordingly, we have to do the good, do the good due diligence in terms of the which weather data we should use while uh, designing the plant platform. Okay. Uh, in fact, I will give uh, our experience with respect to the models that we had installed in some of projects uh, which we had executed three to four years back. Uh, in certain uh, models, there were hot spots and steel trails which has come up. Uh, the only and uh, the modules of that, uh, if you raise the questions and if you raise the warranty case, it will directly go to the, the quality team. And the first response which will come from the quality team is uh, either your operation and maintenance team is not doing a good job, uh, the water that has been used is not of good quality. Basically, their KRA is to reject the claim whatever it has been raised by the company. So. Uh, what we are done is whenever we are we are signing the or we are buying the modules, we are very clear about the terms and conditions which goes to the procurement of the modules and the bomb of the modules which comes to us. So that is what we had learned uh, in our experience that be very clear about the bomb of the module, about the terms and conditions, and don't go only with the price part. You lower the price that kind of quality you are going to get. So be very clear on the form that you are procuring from any module supply. Whether it is tier 1, tier 2, it does not matter. Because we don't have the fixed framework. If you look at the BNEF uh, tier 1 list also, they mainly talks about the financial strength of the company. Uh, now going to Mr. Vijay So uh, Mr. Vijay we would like to understand about the good engineering practices. You can imagine, uh, we have to select each component with certain specifications, with certain uh, quality parameters, inspection parameters. So it's a like a very tedious exercise. And if uh, you are driven only by process, our only motive is that okay, in any product we want to have the product which has the lowest price. Then you can't ensure a good quality solar PV plant. So I think people have to understand this that. Design engineering also has a cost. If you really want a good quality plant, it comes with a price. You can't just have the lowest quality, uh, highest quality plant with the lowest quality price. So, a uh, lot of innovations are happening. See, many times uh, innovation is also driven by price, which is good if we are not compromising on the quality. And uh, in the solar sector, also, we can see. A lot of technologies, new technologies being used. Breaker, like uh, already Selesh discussed uh, about it. So we have breakers, we have fixed steel, we have seasonal deal, and depending on the location and the technology, we, we should use for each product. So similarly, in module also you have thin film, you have polycrystalline, crystalline. Again, each technology has its own uh, benefits, and we have to do a proper. Uh, analysis of which suits better so that you have a good quality plant as well as uh, it doesn't uh, uh, go beyond your cost economics so for each of the component uh, we have to use uh, this due diligence and ensure that the final plant quality is goes is optimum